Welcome to another episode of Buying Stuff and Talking About It, where I break down the marketing behind the biggest e-commerce brands in the world. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about one of the most famous e-commerce brands ever, Dollar Shave Club, and their biggest rival, Harry's Razors. I'm going to break down their product, their packaging, their emails, their ads, their websites. Plus, we're giving away a shave set to three lucky winners, so stick around for how to enter the drawing. Okay, here we go. Harry's versus Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club burst onto the scene in 2012 with their now famous viral video. Then in 2015, they were bought by Unilever for a billion dollars. Harry's is their main competitor with modern design, transparent practices, and a progressive message. In terms of business models, both of them are direct-to-consumer subscription. You buy the handle, and then every month or so you get a pack of razors, and they want to upsell you on soaps and toothbrushes, even butt wipes. As a customer acquisition strategy, both of them use a tripwire, which is a term that digital marketer popularized a few years back, which is essentially a low-priced front-end offer to get you in the door and then transition you into a full-price subscription. And to give you a sense of their rivalry, both of these brands have published blog posts about why they are better than the other. With Dollar Shave Club focusing on quality of shave and Harry's focusing on design, price, and company values. But my question is, who has the better marketing? Well, let's find out in round one, product and packaging. Here are their trip wires. Both of them are trial sets with, uh, you know, a some some razors, a handle, a ride-along, very important ride-alongs, and some other stuff. Now, let's start with the defending champs, Dollar Shave Club. We're gonna start with them first. One thing to know is that first impressions are super important. This is our first physical interaction with the brand. How are they gonna use it? How are they gonna make me feel? Am I gonna be excited about their products? Let's take a look at Dollar Shave Club and really dive into what they sent and how it feels to receive their product. Dollar Shave Club does a pretty good job. They say, welcome to the club, right? In the open of the packaging, they're also using recycled materials. I actually use this for my brands. This is post-consumer paper, so this is really good. I like that a lot. They've got their brand logo at the bottom of their box and they've got their support number, when their support is open. They've got some nice stuff inside their box. They don't get any points for packaging from me though because their razor is wrapped in plastic. It's like you're gonna do sustainability on one end but then wrap your razor in plastic. Doesn't make any sense, not very beautiful, doesn't feel good. Now, they also have their little razor packet here. It's got the razors in it. They got a little bit of cardboard talking to you about, you know, how to use the blades, how long to use the blades. They only give me two blades and they have two that are empty. As a consumer, this makes me feel like I didn't get as many as I should have gotten. Like, should I have had two more? So I, I don't really like that about it. I understand it's a trial, etc. but it's like, come on, give me all four blades or make something that only has two in there so I don't feel like I'm missing something. In addition to that, this is the stuff they said they were gonna send me. Shave butter, post do shave, prep scrub, but there's no free trials, there's no samples, there's nothing beyond what was supposed to be in there and it's all just layered in there. It's not really packed that well. Now, they do have a real nice multi-fold ride along that has a beautiful dog on the front and it says, you never forget your first box. It's kind of funny, right? And then it's going into like, you know, meet the team that makes it happen. These are all the people. And, you know, while I think that's fun about, hey, these are all the people who made this stuff, I would have done one to two pains with that. And then I would have done value proposition, ownership benefit, why I should be excited about the product. I think they went overboard on that. On the back, they've got some value proposition, some sales copy, but I'm not seeing any cross sells, any upsells, any coupons for a friend. It's all just, you know, it's not that well done. It's okay, you know, but there's no free trials. There's no upsells. There's no cross sells. There's no discounts. There's no referral program. It's a beautiful trifold, but I think that the sales and marketing of it could have been done a little bit better. One thing I will say about it though, is they do a good job of using humor in here. I'll read something to you to educate you about the brand. And that is always a good idea. If you can make people laugh, if you can make, if you can endear yourself and humor is a really great way to do that. So let me read something to you. 
This is Rochelle H. in marketing. If your kid looks like this, don't worry. She'll grow up to run shit. It's pretty funny. So, so they're about us is really funny, but I just think they went overboard on it. Um, in my opinion. And then, you know, the sales and marketing material is pretty good, but there's no incentives and there's no like real cross sells to other products. So it's a pretty good flyer. I am more of a direct marketer. I would have done a little bit more selling because this is an opportunity for me to cross sell and upsell and incentivize to make another purchase. I'm a big fan of doing that. And, and I think they could have up leveled their game to use the parlance of our time in that way. Another thing to note about Dollar Shave Club is their little box. It's much smaller than Mary, Harry's. It's about half the size of Harry's. So smaller package, which means less waste and uh, you know less cost for them. So good on them for that. Let's talk about Harry's box. It's quite big. And what I like about it is they say, hey, as soon as you open it, congratulations, your shave supplies have arrived. That's kind of fun. And then at the bottom, they say, nothing to see here, enjoy your shave. So they're not really using this in the same way that Dollar Shave Club is, where they're putting their support, their phone number, the hours. They're just saying, hey, congratulations, and look into the bag, don't look at this box. So they're not using this box as well as they could, but in terms of the real estate of it and being able to brand it and put their logo on it and maybe put some other information in there like Dollar Shave Club has done. But the way they have done it is like, hey, nothing to see here, keep on moving. So that's kind of cool. But also I would have used it for, I would put more content inside the box. Now Harry's comes in a nice bag. What I like about this is it's kind of fun. It says here in lies everything you need for your shave. It's got a picture of a dude. It goes along with their branding. What I don't like about it from a, you know, someone who cares about sustainability is it's like extra unneeded packaging. It's a bag inside of a box. And then I'm sure if we, when we open this, there's going to be more packaging. So it's like this whole initiative of company values and all this stuff that they're talking about is wonderful, but it's like from a sustainability standpoint, at least Dollar Shave Club was using post, uh, post-consumer, um, you know, uh, recycled paper, they're using plastic inside of a box. So I don't love that about them. Now, in terms of how it looks, it's beautiful. And, you know, on the back, they say it's, 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 the, it's what's on the inside that counts. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that basically just tells you how to shave. So I think this is really a, it's not very, the copy on here is not very well done at all. It's like, here's how you shave. With these products, you can shave. That's essentially what they're saying. So I feel like their sales copy on this package could use a little work. Let's open this up and see what's inside. All right, nice Harry's branded box with the razor inside of it. That's pretty cool, beautiful looking razor. Much better looking, much bigger, much more, feels much better than the Dollar Shave Club razor. Has its own nice little box. Feels better than the piece of plastic that Dollar Shave Club was in, although, you know, extra paper. I feel like, I still feel like if you're gonna go this direction, it's better to have a box than plastic myself. Then they've got uh, Harry's Shave Gel, a big old can of spray stuff for, for shaving. And let's see if there's a ride along in here. Oh, there is a ride along. They've got their uh, razor, I can't even hold that. This is a nice little razor pouch to put your little razor in. So they, so notice that Harry's only gives me one blade and then they give me a pouch to hold the container to keep it clean. And then I've got a real nice ride along here, smaller. We'll talk about this in just a second, but this is the ride along and instructionals on how to use it. No cross sells, no upsells, no free trials of other products as well. Just ride along razor and shave kit. But this is an unadvertised bonus. And I think that is very cool. They did not advertise that I was going to get this and it came with it and I feel good. Oh yeah, I got something I didn't expect. I do this with my cotton bags. When you buy a Boomstick Trio, I give you something that you didn't expect that makes you feel good when you receive the product. So Harry's Ride Along is like tips for better shaving. And well, actually this is the tips for how to do a better shaving. And then this is all about the brand. So basically it's like, you know, this is who we are. You can call us. These are the products, some of the products we have, but there's no product imagery. There's no cross sell. There's no education about how they make their stuff. There's no, there's nothing about content they might send you. There's no uh, coupon or discount or contest. There's just like, there's no marketing here. It's like, here's a little bit about us. And then here's how you use this product. But there's nothing about other stuff they have, what they think is a brand, what they do, what they've got coming out. There's no incentive to go join them on social. Really, in my opinion, not the best ride along in the world. So those were their starter sets. Now, to their credit, they both make it incredibly hard to cancel uh, and, and not get the subscription. So I ended up with accidental subscriptions to both of them. So let's talk about what comes after you sign up for the subscription. So with, um, with Harry's, they went from a big giant box 
to a little tiny box. So when you actually get their monthly subscription, it's this little tiny thing. And in it comes two packages of four razors. So I got four razors in here and I've got four razors in here, right? And then I've got this little box, no ride along, no nothing. I don't get the shave cream. I only got that in the, in the trial. The shave cream doesn't come in this and uh, no, no paraphernalia, no sales material, nothing. Just the two uh, razors. Dollar Shave sends it in the same box they sent it in before. They send me a really, really fun ride along. I mean, this is what I'm talking about from a ride along, right? This is a whole booklet. It's educational. It's fun. It says, take this into the bathroom with you. So you take it in and when you're on, you're on the toilet, you can read it. There's funny little things in here. There's little stories. Um, you know, there's ideas of what to do after you eat that won't make you barf, they say. And, you know, there's nothing really about their products, which I would have definitely put in, but they do say that you can get some toothbrush. So they are cross-selling you toothbrush on the back. So they, they win on that regard for their ride along and their thing uh, in, the, in the monthly subscription. Then on, you actually do get four razors when the monthly subscription comes and you get much bigger uh, bottles of the three things that came in the initial box. And I will say from a sustainability perspective, I like this better than, than, um, than what they sent first time because there's no plastic. So the, there's no plastic, there's just the products as they come which is kind of nice. So that's the, that's the monthly products. That's what you get when you actually stay a part of the description. So we've now seen their trial sets. We've now seen the products we get. Let's go to the scoreboards and see who wins product and packaging. How do these brands take advantage of building relationship and excitement with me when I receive their product? Dollar Shave Club educates me on their brand using personality, using a little bit of content, using a little bit of humor. And what Harry's is really doing is kind of explaining their mission as a company and selling me on their subscription model. So I'm giving one point to Dollar Shave Club for content because I'm a content marketer. And even though I think they could have done a better job of it, they're using content, they're telling a story and they're having fun with it. And that's going to work better than what Harry's is doing. But I'm also giving one point to Harry's for content because while I don't think the content is as fun and as engaging, they are doing what I tell people to do, which is share your mission, share your story, share your company values. So they're actually using content too. It's just not quite as compelling. I think both of them could use a little work in their direct response selling, especially on the trial kits. But Harry's also gets a point for content and Harry's gets a point for presentation because the presentation of their content is more compelling, more fun, more engaging. So Harry's actually gets two points in this round, making the score one to two and giving the first round to the challenger, Harry's Razors. Harry's wins product and packaging. Packaging is better, product is better in terms of how it feels to receive, how it feels in your hand, and the design and aesthetic is better. So Harry's wins this round, two to one. So now that we've seen what they're selling us, let's look at how they're doing it in round two, Facebook advertising. I look at advertising in three pillars, awareness, retargeting, and loyalty. Let's start with awareness, where they're trying to get their message and their brand and their product in, out in front of people who've never heard about them before. I dug into both brands, Facebook and Instagram ads, and I noticed immediately that one of them had a huge problem. Let's start with Dollar Shave Club. I'm gonna show you three of the main ads I saw over and over again. So this is the first ad. I wanna point out that they're doing some really good stuff. They're saying, hey, get $15 worth of shaving supplies for just $5. So they're making a value proposition that you're gonna get more than you pay for. They're using emojis as bullet points. And they're saying, hey, you know, you're getting amazing products. We're world famous. We've got this world famous product. They're talking about the benefits of their product. And then they've got a big giant four by five ratio video, which is gonna take up a lot of real estate on mobile and they're doing what I've done, which is editing a headline right into the video. So above the video, as you're watching it, there's a big headline that says, I don't really like shaving at all. And it, then it's this guy going through his shave routine. It's real native. It looks real. It looks authentic, but they're, they're doing a really good job with this video ad. Here's another ad that they do. Notice the same formula emojis as bullets. They're using ownership benefit statements, value propositions, value claims. They're saying, Hey, you can get a starter set for just $5. And then they're saying, Hey, do you hate shaving, you might need this. Again, that four by five ratio video with the text edited in. And then here's another kind of fun one. Another thing, same exact copy, 
from the first ad we looked at, but a different video. In this case, they don't have text edited in, but they're saying, hey, girl razors are too expensive. Don't pay more for pink. So they're, uh, they're going out to women and they're saying, hey, you're being sold razors that are pink and fancy, but you don't need those. You can use these amazing razors and you can get them cheaper. So they're, they're appealing to women here, which I like. They're going both men and women, doing a really good job with their mobile. Most of uh, Facebook's ad uh, inventory is mobile. About 90% of Facebook's ad revenue comes from mobile. So all their videos are in a mobile format, a four by five ratio. Really, really beautiful job by Dollar Shave Club with these videos. I would have probably had links above the videos so that you didn't have to click below the video. I always include a text link, uh, HTML hyperlink, blue underline link above my videos in the first couple lines of copy so that someone can click above the video as well as below. But otherwise, these, these video ads are amazing. All right, now let's look at some of Harry's top of funnel advertisements. Okay, here we have Harry's with a big giant 16 by nine image ad opening with an emoji saying, should a pack of razors cost $32? We don't think it should. Enjoy smooth, comfortable shave with Harry's. Your face and your wallet will thank you. Just eight bucks to get started. And they've got that hyperlink above the ad uh, so you don't have to click below. And then they say, try our best selling starter kit today. Get a handle and choice of your color and a five blade cartridge. So they're really playing to price. They're saying, hey, razors are overpriced. And you know, and their, their razors are on a sheepskin, which I think is kind of interesting, but it's a fairly compelling image. And they're saying, hey, you're paying too much for razors. Very simple value proposition, all about price. Second ad, this is in that uh, four by five ratio for mobile. And they're basically just saying, hey, we, we charge honest prices. We're gonna be cheaper. They've got a nice colored backdrop, text overlay. They're saying join over 5 million guys who've tried Harry's. So they're using social proof and they're making a play on price. And then this is actually just a carousel of images with no text above it. And it says, join over 5 million guys that have tried Harry's. Bonus, you get your free shipping on starter set. So it's just a carousel of their products. And they're saying, hey, a bunch of people use us. We've got some social proof here going on. There's a fun emoji and these are our products. Okay, right away, I see one huge difference. Harry's is not using any top of funnel video ads. Bro, come on! That is a big, big no-no in today's world. The best way to build relationship and engagement and, and uh, uh, community and sell is via video. Tone, cadence, you can feel it, you can see it, you can hear it. It's so much better than image ads and GIF ads. Not to mention, you're gonna miss out on, let's say 65 plus percent of the inventory that you could get if you're not running video ads. So that's really, really bad that they're not doing. I mean, images are great, GIFs are great, and those should supplement a good video ad strategy for your top of funnel. All right, I gotta stop everything and give Harry's a buzz because that's just no good. That's just not good. You gotta have video at the top of the funnel, but format aside, let's take an in-depth look at what these ads are actually doing. I love the testimonial in Dollar Shave's ad. It shows the razor in action and the user enjoying the experience. It's using social proof to develop a pain point and then solve it. And the copy is also super easy to read and it lays out the offer really well. On the other hand, I like how Harry's captures their brand aesthetic and the beauty of their products. But here's my issue. Harry's copy doesn't even apply to their offer. What the hell are you talking about? They ask, should an eight pack of razors really cost $32? But what they're giving you isn't an eight pack of razors. In fact, looking at what the ad says, it says $8 gets you started, but you don't know with what. I'm gonna have to buzz them again for that. They just have so much they could say about their brand and their product and their story, but instead they just show you an image of the product with some misleading copy. It looks more like a retargeting ad, which is what we're looking at next. But first, let's settle up with some points. I gotta give the first point to Dollar Shave Club for you guessed it, using top of funnel video. Another point to Dollar Shave Club for using a testimonial to establish a problem and offer a solution, which is one of my favorite things to do in ad copy. And another point to Dollar Shave Club for using their copy to really clearly lay out the offer. Beautiful ads by Dollar Shave Club. That's three points for them. For Harry's, I'll give them one point for aesthetic. But that's it. They showcase their brand aesthetic, but they have really missed the boat on their top of funnel advertising by not using video, by not having great copy. I mean, they just are not doing well there. I gotta give them one point for the aesthetic of the product, but that's it. So that brings our current total in round two to three points Dollar Shave Club, one point Harry's. Let's continue round two 
with the retargeting pillar of advertising, which is getting your message back in front of people once they've engaged with you once. They've seen an ad, they've visited your site, they've engaged on some level, now we're trying to bring them back in and sell them. Let's talk about retargeting for Harry's first Dollar Shave Club. Let's start with Dollar Shave Club's retargeting ad. I really like that Dollar Shave is using the same person that's in their awareness ad. It looks like they actually edited one video into several parts, which gets them a ton of value from their content and they're giving their ads a sense of continuity. Ooh, that's interesting. The other thing I really love about this ad is that they're using a testimonial quote and that in that testimonial quote, they don't just say, hey, this guy's a customer, but they say this guy's a customer since 2014, showing off that he's been a customer for a long time. And they've got that link above the video. Again, they're using a beautiful native mobile video that looks super natural and they've got the text link above it. So they've learned from their awareness ads that they should be putting text links above their videos. They've got an emoji pointing to it and the testimonial, which is by the way, if you ever look at Boom by Cindy Joseph advertising, you will see me using these in most of my ads in retargeting and loyalty. I'm using testimonial quotes as most of my ad copy. It's just such a good one too. He says, hey, you know, do you wanna pay less for high quality razor blades? Dollar Shave is for you. Do you want a simple to use website that just works? Dollar Shave is for you. Even my girlfriend uses it now. Go sign up, you won't regret it. So basically, this testimonial is like, better than anything they ever could have written themselves because it says, hey, you're gonna pay less, it's gonna be easy to use, and here's a little social proof for you that says the woman in my life is also using this and it's got a call to action. I mean, it's just a really, really well done ad. Now, for Harry's, I think it's an improvement from their last ad. I like the image more, their copy goes into more details on what their offer and brand is, but come on guys, still no video? Granted, this type of ad works better in the retargeting pay stage, but still, I gotta buzz ya. Now, I know I just buzzed them because it is terrible to not be using video, but let's break down the copy a little bit. They're doing a better job with the copy here. They're saying, hey, are you not sure it's right for you? So they're, they're establishing that they know that you've checked them out. Here's three reasons why you should um, consider us you know, against our competitors. We have no risk and no commitment. We have an incredible tri trial offer and we're factory direct. So basically they're saying, hey, look, you know, it's a satisfaction guarantee, it's real cheap, and uh, these products are amazing and you don't get upcharged. So they're playing on price. It's a better ad, but it's still not that well done. Meanwhile, Dollar Shave has a third ad from the same spokesperson. And together, this series of ads does a great job establishing a problem, presenting a solution, and educating me on their offer. All right, let's get some more points on the board in round two, the retargeting pillar. One point for Dollar Shave Club for continuing to use video. Another point to Dollar Shave Club for this three-part testimonial that starts at the awareness pillar and is continued in retargeting. They're using what's called sequenced retargeting. They saw that I watched one testimonial in the retargeting pillar and then they showed me another testimonial from the same person. So this kind of three-part series, point on the board for that. Then again, you gotta give one point to Harry here for continuing to educate me a little bit more on their brand, a little bit more on what the offer is and why it's a good offer and doing a little bit better of a job with copy and imagery. It's still not that great, but it's better than the first level of ads and I think it does deserve a point. That leaves us right now in round two at five for Dollar Shave Club and two for Harry's. Let's move on to the loyalty pillar where once someone has actually bought from you, you're trying to cross sell them and upsell them and get them to buy something else. So awareness, you get people's attention, get them to know about you, retargeting, you retarget them and re-engage them and try to get them to buy. And then once they buy, you follow up and upsell and cross sell in the loyalty pillar. Awareness, retargeting and loyalty. So here we are looking at loyalty ads from Dollar Shave Club and Harry's. Now in this last part of round two, what I'm really looking for are members only deals, contests, giveaways, uh, content engaging me, specials, sales, promotions, upsells, cross-sells, stuff to keep me engaged, educate me further, entertain me, and sell me stuff. I did see a few ads from Dollar Shave. Let's take a look at them. In these ads, they use the same testimonial formula to sell me on their toothbrush and toothpaste, which is not bad. If something works, use it. They're using real beautiful video ads with images and text overlay with the same person and all three ads showing off why the uh, toothbrush is good, why it's valuable, why the toothpaste is good, why it's not gonna have your breath stink. Really awesome upsell and cross-sell 
to their toothpaste and toothbrush, showing off the value of the product, how fun it looks, how easy it is to use, how good it is. And they're saying, hey, are you still using store-bought toothpaste that doesn't cut it? Well, we designed ours for women who need that. And their ad copy is the same on all the ads. So, you know, they found a formula, they're using it, good, beautiful video, customer testimonials, text overlay with a call to action at the end, beautiful upsell, cross-sell ads. And now let's look at Harry's post-purchase, upsell, cross-sell, engagement, keep me entertained, sell me stuff, talk to me, educate me on the products I just bought, giveaways, contests, let's see what they're doing. Not one piece of post-purchase content, not one. You'd think that with over 3 million customers and $100 million in venture capital funding that Harry's could afford some post-purchase ads or some post-purchase content, or some follow-up, or some giveaways, or some social contests. But no, nothing. Everybody's doing something, we'll do nothing. <laughs> Which means I have to award one more point to Dollar Shave Club for just having post-purchase ads. Neither of them are doing a great job, by the way. They're, they're, I mean, Dollar Shave Club is wonderful. Upsell, cross-sell to their next product with some testimonials. Okay, cool. No contests, no giveaways, no content engagement, no multi-tiered upsell, cross-sell, where if, they don't, if I don't buy the first product, they show me the second product. No dynamic product carousels, where it's like only video ads. They're not showing image ads, gift ads, carousel ads, catalog ads. It's like really barren, but at least Dollar Shave Club has some ads, and for Harry's, a whole lot of nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> they don't get a point for this one because they're not even doing it. So that brings us right now in round two with Dollar Shave Club at six points. This is for awareness, retargeting, and loyalty ads on Facebook and Instagram, and Harry's at only two points in the advertising department. So here are my takeaways from their Facebook ads. First of all, you gotta use video in your awareness ads, your retargeting ads, and your loyalty ads. You have to use it, and you have to educate on your brand, especially when it could give you a huge advantage over your main competitor. Harry's is not doing either of those. And definitely, definitely market, upsell, cross-sell, engage, offer value, entertain your past buyers. That is where your bread and butter is in e-commerce. That's where you make all your money. You have to do that. So for round two, landslide victory, not even close, not even in the same stratosphere of successful advertising. Dollar Shave Club takes it. Let's move to round three, social. Harry's delivers most of their social content on Instagram. Let's take a look at their feed and break it down. As you can see, Harry's has a super nice Instagram. I'm seeing lots of product images and well-curated photography, and it's very consistent with their brand aesthetic, but I'm not seeing a lot of content. And I gotta buzz you for that, sorry. That's just not good. Social is all about content. It's all about engagement. Yes, you've got to have product and you've got to have testimonials, but even more than that, you've got to have entertainment and education. Now, Let's check out Dollar Shave Club's Instagram. Their feed is a lot of fun. They got some cartoons, some fun facts, some products, and I'm seeing a better balance between content and selling, which is what social's all about. Recently, they ran a contest where they sent a customer to space for buying their butt wipes. All in all, I like what I'm seeing. So let's look at the scoreboard. Both of them get a point for having beautiful Instagram feeds. One, one. Both of them get another point for using their feed to promote their products. You gotta do that with social. So beautiful, fun, one, one, products, one, one, now it's two, two. But Dollar Shave Club gets an additional point for mixing in fun, compelling, engaging content, social contests, fun facts, for entertaining as well as educating and selling, which brings our total in the social category to three points Dollar Shave Club, two points Harry's. Now let's look at their Facebook feeds and see how they're doing on social in terms of Facebook. There's really no contest between these brands when it comes to their social content on Facebook. Dollar Shave Club is using their page to keep customers engaged and putting a lot of energy into delivering goodwill content like bathroom tips, cartoons, giveaways, blog posts. Meanwhile, last I checked, Harry's hadn't posted anything but ads since 2018. What do you have to say for yourself, Harry's? That's terrible. Jesus. Lately, 
Dollar Shave has been posting Facebook polls and they're getting like 3,000 votes a pop. It's an easy way to stay in people's news feeds. And here's what makes it extra special. They're coordinating these polls with their content marketing. Remember that space contest from their Instagram feed? That's being used to promote their butt wipes. And throughout that month, they were posting a ton of content about pooping. The polls start the conversation that eventually leads to the offer. It's a clever way to add content to their sales cycle. So, okay, picking up the score where we left off, I'm giving one point to Dollar Shave Club for using Facebook in their content and social strategy. So one Dollar Shave. And I'm giving zero points to Harry's for social for having zero content at all. So. Harry's is losing the social battle from a content perspective, doing great with beautiful imagery, great with selling their product, but like on social, you gotta use content. You gotta use content marketing engagement, in my opinion. It can't just be all product. So Harry's, sorry, you got nothing. And that makes Dollar Shave Club the winner of round three, putting them ahead in the race at two rounds to one. Can Dollar Shave Club keep their momentum going or will the challenger Harry's stage a comeback in the late rounds to win the title? Only time will tell. But before we get there, I wanna remind you that I'm gonna do a giveaway and one of you, actually three of you, get the opportunity to win a, a shave set from Harry's or Dollar Shave Club, your choice. Stick around for how to enter. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there for now. Let's jump into round four, four the email game, a very, very important part of e-commerce, about 34% of revenue generated from e-commerce stores still comes from email. For me, it's a little bit higher than that because I focus a lot on emails, big, important pillar. Let's take a look at email and see how they're doing in that category. Neither of these brands have a traditional email opt-in newsletter on their site, but if you create an account on their sites, you get put on to their pre-purchase email newsletter. So essentially their automation that is designed to get you to buy once you've set up an account and not finish your purchase. A pre-purchase automation trying to get you to buy. Let's take a look at them and see which one's doing a better job. So starting with Dollar Shave Club's pre-purchase emails, all of them are basically trying to get me to go back and get my starter set. They pretty much function as abandoned cart emails, which they shouldn't by the way. They're giving me more details on the products, they're stressing how good the deal is, and they're trying to get me to go back to their site. Nowhere in this sequence do they use any non-sales content. So for the first time, I'm gonna have to give Dollar Shave Club a buzz. Dollar Shave Club, you have a ton of amazing, compelling, fun content. Why aren't you using it in arguably your most important marketing channel and arguably your most important email sequence, which is your pre-purchase automation sequence? Come on, Dollar Shave Club, you can do better than this. Now, let's check out what Harry's is doing for their pre-purchase automation sequence. Now, the cool thing is that Harry's has more variety in their pre-purchase emails. They, they send a simple welcome email thanking me for considering them, an email that talks about their warehouse and educates me on their brand and the quality of their products. They do an email reminding me of their satisfaction guarantee. If anything, I think they could have sent out a few more emails highlighting their products and reminding me to go back and buy. But still, for pre-purchase emails, let's find out who I'm giving points to. For pre-purchase emails, I'm giving one point to Harry's and nothing Dollar Shave Club because Dollar Shave Club, you need to do a better job here. Let's take a look at their post-purchase emails and see who does a better job there. Let's start by looking at Harry's post-purchase emails. Their confirmation email is pretty straightforward. But in some of their other transactional emails, telling me that my trial has shipped or that my restock razor has shipped, they do include some content at the bottom, which I like. And they also send an email from a support member, like from a real person and a mystery box cross sell, which is interesting, but I'm just not convinced is a great cross sell strategy. I think a specific relevant cross sell might be a better option than a random thing that I don't know what it is. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Let's now switch to Dollar Shave. Their welcome email includes a video from their CEO, a strategy that I've used and that I'm a big fan of. I love welcome emails that include a video from someone on the team. The video uses their usual humor to explain the membership. The email itself also calls out the membership as well as their satisfaction guarantee and their brand content. From there, Dollar Shave has just a lot more variety. And I have to say, 
when it comes to post-purchase emails, they have Harry's Beat. The email from the support member, it's just a lot easier to read. They've got a few different cross-sells where they show me other products, a clever offer for an additional Razor handle, and my favorite, an email right before your refill date, seeing if you wanna add more products to the box. They know you're getting a refill, they know it's time, and they wanna see if they can upsell you or cross-sell you. That's relevant, it's well-timed, and it's a good cross-sell. And on top of that, they send you an incentive to download their mobile app and deliver some of their original content right to your iPhone. And I'm a huge fan of incentivizing users to take the actions you want them to take, including downloading a mobile app for your store. So let's go to the scoreboard and see who's winning the post-purchase email game. In the post-purchase email category, Dollar Shave Club has Harry's so far beat. I mean, they, they decimate them in this category so heavily that I'm giving them two points against zero for Harry's just because the, I mean, when you look at them side by side, Dollar Shave has done so much of a better job here. So two points of Dollar Shave, which actually gives them the win for round four and puts them up three rounds to one against Harry's. Let's move in to round five. Website and landing pages. Harry's doesn't just need a win here. They need to win so well. They need to have such a big win that they get double points and force a tie break. Think they can do it? Let's find out. Let's jump in and start with their home pages. Okay, taking a look at Harry's home page here. They've got a video, but there's no ability to show audio. It just kind of shows what the product is and what you get. And it says get started, but it's not really a focus on the trial. It doesn't say start your trial. It's not focused on their core offer. They've got a little bit about why they're different and kind of why they're, you know, how they're, they give back and they're made with integrity, but they're focusing a lot of their home page on their other products. They've only got one little section on their main product. I think they should have, you know, uh, a little bit more focus on their starter kit. I do like that they've got, you know, a nice uh, top navigation here with with uh, image uh, nav image navigation on the drop down, so image and text. They've got a nice little about section where you can find about them, and they've got their get started button, which is takes you straight to the offer page for their trial set. But they might actually want that as their homepage, especially for someone like me who's not cookied and has never been there. They don't have a sticky header as you scroll, so I don't like that. You'll notice that when we go to Dollar Shave Club, they do have a sticky header as we scroll with a call to action in it, so they get direct response a little bit better. You definitely want that sticky header. So I think Harry's homepage could be done a little bit better. Let's take a look at Dollar Shave's homepage now. Um, another, you know, video, no audio, but nice, compelling full screen video seems to be the way to go here. I'm only looking at the desktop. We can look at mobile in just a second. They also have a much larger menu. They've got a fly out menu to the left. Uh, they don't have drop downs in their top nav. They're really focusing their top nav on the call to action to get started. As soon as you scroll below their trial, they're going to have that call to action stay with you. And they've got the whole homepage focused on this trial. When do you want it? It can be flexible. Here's some FAQs about it. So it's a really focused sales page. And, you know, it focuses on how their membership works. It focuses on the value proposition, right? Get ready to look, smell, and feel your best. It's got a background video um, that, you know, shows who their product is for and how it's used. They've got a restock box section that feels incomplete and it's like a, race, a waste of real estate. It's like, I haven't even gotten a box yet. Why do I care about restocking it? I do love this little section that's incentivizing me to upsell and cross sell more. So to buy, buy more than just the trial and get a discount, that's kind of a fun little section that they've got going on. And then my favorite part of their page is their offer FAQ. This is like, what's the catch? So basically they're saying, hey, listen, we're gonna be transparent with you. We're gonna talk to you about it. I don't like that they've got gray on gray. It's very hard to read, but I do love that they've got an FAQ on their product offer page and that this page is much more focused on the main offer that they want me to buy and has more direct response elements to it. Dollar Shave is definitely winning in the homepage department. Now, one of the things that we will notice is that both of these pages are focused in one way or another on getting us to click that get started button. Harry's has the get started button here on the left with a colored backdrop. They're using what's called the isolation effect on this button, which is designed to make it stand out and get me to click it and take me to their get started page. They also have a link for it in their top navigation. And Dollar Shave Club is also on their homepage. They've got the get started button also with that isolation effect. And as soon as they scroll, they're using a sticky header to get me to click that get started button. And also it is in their navigation right up there on the top left. So that's what they're trying to get me to do. Let's talk about their get started pages, which are essentially the main offer pages for their trials. 
Now, Dollar Shave Club is essentially forcing me through a quiz before I can see the product, right? They're saying, hey, hey, let's get started. You know, what's your name? You know, uh, where do you shave? They want to know what I shave so they can cross sell and upsell better. Do you have any? Are you worried about any of the above? You know, sensitive skin, acne, chapped lips, etc. Describe the hair on your head, no hair, thick. And uh, do you use any kind of soap or body wash? What type of deodorant do you use? And then view recommendations. So they're making me give them content. They're making me fill out a survey. They're making me go through a quiz before I can actually see their products, which they must have tested and must be working for them. But the part that I don't like about it is it's not incentivized. There's no reason for me to do it other than, you know, hey, it's going to help me customize the box. I think they're probably losing a lot of people with this set. There's no details or benefits about the products or the trial. Just like fill this out. Now, Harry's, on the other hand, the first thing that they do is confirm you with the subscription. They don't actually list in the copy what you're getting. Harry's, in my opinion, is doing a better job on this Get Started page. They've got an image navigation up here at the top, right? Step one, step two. They show you the product. They say it's a special offer just for you. They let you make a choice and that choice correlates to an image on the left. And then if you scroll below the next step button, they're showing you what you're going to get. They're talking about how cool it is. It's essentially long form sales copy. They should have another call to action down at the bottom. But then when you click next step, now you get to make a choice. Do you want eight blades? Do you want eight blades and a gel? Do you want the family plan? They've got the middle one selected. They say you're going to save 5% and get free shipping. And then you can go to the next step down at the bottom. They're asking you how often do you shave? So they're also forcing you through a, um, you know, a wizard, a quiz wizard that's going to give them information on you, but as they're doing it, it's customizing your order as opposed to Dollar Shave Club where you haven't even gotten into selecting products and they're trying to get this information from you. So um, Harry's Wizard is so much better because you're reviewing your order and then of course they've got an upsell cross sell here that pops up on the shopping cart before you check out, which is a really good thing. And we actually offer this in our one click upsell application. We let people do this same thing. We pop up a one time offer on the cart page in the form of a light box on desktop and mobile that someone can say yes or no to or X out of. So really good job from Harry's on their get started wizard, much better than Dollar Shave Club. All right, now let's take a look at their main category page. One of the things you'll notice, and I haven't looked at this on mobile just yet. I'll go back through and look on mobile after I'm done. I wanted to take you through on desktop first, but you'll notice when you click on products here on Harry's, they really want to force you into a category. They don't want you to go shop all to their main category of all their products. In fact, they kind of hide it under the image. It's very hard to see. I didn't even see it at first. So let's, let's think of one of their categories, the one that's most prominent, shave, as the one to analyze rather than their main category. So basically, they've got a hero image here at the top. Then they're talking about some value propositions. They've got their uh, unique selling propositions in image format, but they don't have the products. You got to do a full scroll before you get to the products, which is a big no-no in e-commerce. I'm going to come back and look at all these pages on mobile in a minute. Uh, they've got their main products that you can select. It's kind of nice. You can see the images swap on, on the category page, which is good. You can do a quick view and slash see what's inside each of these by clicking that little magnifying glass. But, but in order to go to these product pages, you have to click it. They're trying to get you to add to cart directly from the category page, which in my opinion, in my experience, is not the best strategy in e-commerce. You more would like to have someone view a product offer page and then add to cart rather than trying to get them to add to cart right here from the category page. So I would have this say view rather than select. I like that they've got some gift sets. I like that they've got their individual products down at the bottom. I like that they've started with their bundles up at the top, their highest average order value items. Pretty good job on their collection page, but they don't have any sales copy, no content, nothing. So I would take this section here and I would actually stick it below the products because when someone comes to a category page, they're searching for products. They're not searching for sales copy, but once they've gotten to the bottom at that point, that is where I would show this. So I would rearrange the structure of this page. Let's take a look at Dollar Shave Club's category page. So I'll go to products here, their main collection page. And again, you know, they're trying to sell us the starter set. They've got that call to action for the starter set, which is on their home page right at the top. Then they've got their shave category with some products in it. You can create a bundle right here, which is kind of fun. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. Notice that they're breaking up this page with colored backdrops, white backdrop, blue backdrop, green backdrop, right? 
this is all they're using colors as a way to break up the sections and notice that they've got the isolation effect on all of their call to action buttons and they're showing you a, a call to action to go check out this bundle and all the products in this particular category but they're also giving you a way to add the products to the cart whereas harry's was only giving you a way to add the products to the cart and in order to click over and see the individual products you it wasn't clear the call to actions weren't focused on that whereas here they're saying hey you can go into this individual category or you can add the products to the cart right from this main collection page. So I think that they're doing a better job by having a main category page of which Harry's didn't have. And then when you go into one of their individual categories, you know, again, they've got the call to action or they've got the sales copy up at the top. I would have actually put that down below. They do have some copy down below. Uh, you do have to scroll to get to see the products. But one of the things I don't like is that these products all kind of blend together. They've all got the new label. The outline doesn't really outline, like the color of the background is, is no different than the color of the rest of the page. It's kind of hard to see the text in there. Like they're just not doing a great job of making these things visible. And they're also trying to get you to add to cart right here from the category page rather than clicking you into the individual product pages. And then their individual product pages are not that well laid out. We'll look at those in just a second. So, you know, neither of them are doing the greatest job in the world on their collections. Now, Let's dive in and take a look at the product pages from each of these folks. Harry's is doing a really, really wonderful job with their buy box of having really nice, beautiful, mobile-friendly imagery and a carousel that you can scroll through. They don't have the call to action above the fold on desktop, which I always try to make happen. They didn't do that here. They've got some nice sales copy, a little bit hard to read, a little bit kind of runs all together. I would probably take this what's in the side, what's in the box and stick it down below the call to action, which would bring the call to action and the options up towards the top. I think this is wasted space on desktop and it's pushing their CTA down. I do like that they have some checkbox upsells. I have this built into Zipify pages where you can click a checkbox on a product offer page in the buy box and upsell. They've got two upsells that you can do. You can sign up for refills. They've got a guarantee and they've got a nice call to action button, but then they've got some long form sales copy. And then when you get to the bottom, the buy box isn't here and there's no way to navigate back up to the buy box. So I like that they're, they've, they've done a good job of their images and I like that they've got a video in the carousel here. It's actually a GIF animation, but I think that the rest of their buy box could be done a little bit better from a direct response perspective. Let's take a look at Dollar Shave Club's buy boxes. Again, we'll take a look at some shave products here for Dollar Shave Club and look at this. No call to action above the fold, not even a carousel above the fold on this product offer page. They've done more of a long form sales page approach, a dream come true, a big image of the product, but you gotta scroll down. You then gotta find the call to action. There's not multiple images, a little bit hard to read this copy. Um, here you got another call to action and a carousel down at the bottom, which you can't go left or right on. So that's kind of weird. I do like that there's a, um, they're offering a, me a bundle. I see on this sales page, they're saying, hey, you can bundle this and save. And then they've got some reviews. I really don't think they've done the best job. There's no CTA above the fold or sales copy or image or carousel above the fold. There's no order bump on this offer page. Uh, the, the images for their unique selling propositions don't even look original. Let me scroll down and show you these. These images here just look like stock images for their unique selling propositions. They've got far too many reviews here. They should only have five visible and then a click to see more. And then at the bottom, they should have a CTA back up to add a product to the cart or get back up to the buy box. Instead, they send us back to the category. So like not a good job on this product offer page by Dollar Shave Club. Better job by Harry's on their product offer page. The funny thing is, if you were to combine both of these brands product offer pages, you'd have one complete product offer page. But on their own, each of them seems about half done. Now, both of them are forcing me to create an account before I can check out, which is something I really don't love, but makes sense in their case because they're trying to sell subscription products, right? This, this one's asking me to put in first name, last name, and email. This one's asking me to sign up with Facebook or also create an account. So, you know, on the shopping cart, Harry's had that upsell, cross-sell light box. I'm gonna have to give them a point for that. Dollar Shave does not have any upsells or cross-sells in their shopping cart. Let's quickly take a look at their pages on mobile and get the mobile experience of their site and then we will um, go and check out their blogs. So I'm gonna go and look at the iPhone view of Harry's. They've got their video, they've got their call to action above the fold, they've got their sales copy cut down, and then they're still selling their other products down at the bottom, not really focused on the get started, no sticky header. So again, I'm gonna have to give the edge to Dollar Shave Club. Let's look at the product pages or a category page. Um, 
Here at the top of the category page, they've got a bunch of content before you actually get to the products. That's a no-no on an e-commerce category page. Again, no sticky header, no call to action. They also only have one row of products, What we find, or one column. What we find is that two columns of products work much better on mobile than one. Let's now take a look at an individual product offer page. As I mentioned, Harry's doing a much better job with their product carousel, big giant mobile friendly images. They've got their call to action here above the content on mobile, which is the way they should have it on desktop. So Harry's is doing a better job on their mobile offer page than they are their desktop offer page. Let's take a look at Dollar Shave Club's homepage on mobile and see how they are doing. So on mobile, Dollar Shave Club also has the sticky header with the call to action. Really got to give them a point for that. They don't have the video on mobile, just a static image, headline, subheadline, and call to action. That's actually an image uh, rotator. I'm going to have to give the edge to Harry's on the mobile call to action uh, at the top of the page uh, for the homepage. But you know, Dollar Shave Club, besides offering two, two calls to action for taking their quiz and the starter sets, they're really focusing on selling their subscription. So again, I like their homepage better. I do think from a layout perspective that um, Harry's is doing a better job on the main call to action, but I like that Dollar Shave has that sticky call to action uh, in the header of the site. Let's go ahead and check out one of their category pages on mobile, see how they're doing. Uh, here is better. Here you can actually see the first product on mobile. They're asking you to bundle and save. So they've got a little swiper that you can tap and they're trying to get you to build a bundle on their uh, category page. It's a really nice feature, trying to upsell you and cross sell you on the category page. I still don't like that they're making me add a product to the cart, but I do like that they've got one featured item up here at the top. And then notice how the uh, item boxes are much shorter in height, thereby allowing you to see more products in one pane and they've got that sticky header going again, thereby allowing you to see more products in one pane than you can when you're looking at Harry's. Again, I still think they should have done two columns rather than just one column, and I do think they should let me see a product offer page on mobile uh, directly from the category page rather than forcing me to add a product to the cart unless I click the image. Here, they're doing a better job. They're doing a better job on mobile where they've got the um, image carousel, but it forces it to go super wide, right? It doesn't let me uh, scroll through it without making it go super wide. So they still got this big giant image and then this kind of weird carousel. So they're doing a better job on mobile, but still not that great. They do have the call to action above the fold. They are giving me the opportunity to add to cart. There's no upsells or cross sells. Their sales copy is a little bit hard to read. Then they've got their unique selling propositions and image format, a little bit of sales copy, and then a whole bunch of social proof and no call to action down at the bottom. Still a much better layout than their desktop product offer page. A few other interesting things about these websites. While both brands have blogs and pretty good ones at that, neither showcases their blog anywhere on their homepage or in their header. You have to go to their footer and search through the menus to find it. Why is that? If you remember our last episode on Quip, they did a way better job of incorporating their content marketing into their website. Also, Dollar Shave Club doesn't have an about page. While Harry splits it into three pages, our story, our factory, and our mission. Lots of good stuff there, but I think it could be presented better with more video, which is my big critique against Harry's. Dollar Shave Club does have a nice how it works page outlining the subscription program and benefits. Neither brand incorporates their viral YouTube videos into their websites. And the winner of round number five, we gotta give it to Dollar Shave Club mostly on the strength of their homepage, which is where most of their organic traffic and ad traffic is gonna be landing, which does a better job of selling their trial. Harry's homepage is scattered, promotes all their products, Dollar Shave Club, given that these are free trial subscription offers, promotes their subscription much better, has less, uh, you know, has some options for their quiz and check out their product sets, but it's mostly really focused on getting people started in the trial, which I think is a better function of the homepage. I think Harry's did win in terms of they had a better product offer page, but they didn't have a better category page, but they did have better content. So I'm giving it to Dollar Shave Club. It was very, very close. Neither of them are doing the greatest job in the world, but the reason I'm giving it to Dollar Shave Club is more direct response focus, sticky headers, um, you know, categorical upsells on mobile, trying to get you to bundle. Although Harry's did do some upselling, cross-selling on the product offer page and in the cart. So they're doing a little bit of direct response, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this one to the big dogs on campus, Dollar Shave Club, making it four rounds to one. Dollar Shave Club 
beats out Harry's. Dollar Shave Club also started scrappier, you know, uh, entrepreneurs making it happen. Of course, they sold out to the biggest company in the world, but Dollar Shave Club wins this one four rounds to one. Fun to look at their marketing. Let's all give it up to Dollar Shave Club. Now, I'd like to hear from you in the comments as well as you can email me, Ezra at smartmarketer.com, comment under the Facebook video, comment under the YouTube video. Tell me what you would do if you were one of these brands to uh, improve their marketing. Where would you make it better? Would you change the product? Would you change the packaging? Would you change the sales copy? Would you change the write-alongs? Would you change the emails? Would you change the ads? Would you change the website? What would you do to improve on either of these brands? My goal with buying stuff and talking about it is to you know, um, share with you a breakdown of how brands are selling their products, how they're communicating their value to customers, how they're engaging, how they're using social proof, how they're telling stories, whether they have good products, whether they have bad products. Both of these, I don't shave, as you can tell, so I don't really know how good these products are. I'm gonna give them to my social media director's husband who shaves his head and his face, so maybe we can find out how good these products are. But my goal is just to have a little fun breaking down some marketing so we can all learn from it and learn how to get better, how to tell better stories ourselves, make better products ourselves, have more fun in our marketing ourselves. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of buying stuff and talking about it. Harry's versus Dollar Shave Club, Dollar Shave Club versus Harry's, Dollar Shave Club wins hands down. And now for the final thing I told you about, which is how can you win and be entered in to win a um, Dollar Shave Club trial kit or a Harry's, this is just the razors, but a Harry's trial kit, the way you can enter to win is whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, comment under this video, tell me which brand you like better. Do you like Harry's better? Do you like Dollar Shave Club better? And why? What did you think, they? based on what I've seen and what you might see looking on their website, which one do you think was better? Which one would you buy from based on this? I think the benefit also of Dollar Shave Club is they really were appealing to women in a way that Harry's was not. So they're appealing to like double the amount of people. I really like that about Dollar Shave Club. Another reason why I think they're winning this race. But who would you pick? Comment underneath this video on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching it, Instagram stories. Tell me and I'm going to pick three lucky winners. I'm going to wait a week. I'm going to pick three lucky winners. I will reach out to you. I'll DM you and I'll figure out a way to, um, you know, get you. I'll have my team actually sign up and ship you a subscription um, of Dollar Shave Club and Harry's, a free trial, and then a month or two of the, of the stuff. So thanks for watching. This was buying stuff and talking about it. Let's move on to the next part of Live from the Internet.